Greetings and salutations. On tonight's edition of Speaking Softly About Music, I, Chaz Winterson, will be looking back at one of the most influential indie core musicians of the past decade, Kevin Nunn. Now, one of the most infamous things about Kevin Nunn is uh, back in 2004, he uh, he did not have proper recording equipment, so he used to uh, he used to give his shows out on VHS. And uh, I actually had I had something like that most people don't know. I I had it on beta. I had his I had his whole show on beta. It was it was very interesting and it blew me away. And I always felt like he had the soul of a poet. And the first time I ever seen Kevin Nung was at Sacred Grounds, and uh, it was so cool because I I knew he was going to be at this very obscure place. I was severely disappointed. There there weren't any like cute chicks over there, but there there were a bunch of hobos. And uh, I remember just taking photos with my friends, like my friend Joey and I. We just went around taking photos of of these hobos, and uh, yeah, it was a, it was a fun night. You know, there was this, this uh, skinny Asian dude, and he was just screaming his heart out, and you, you just were not expecting it. And uh, yeah, there was only like there was only like five people that day, and you know, I just knew I was I was seeing something special. You know, nowadays I, I go to a Kevin Nung show, and and the crowd is double. There's now like 10 people, and uh, he's just he's just such a fucking sellout. He was this really skinny, uh, you know, 115 pound dude, and uh, nowadays he looks like he's like, uh, you know, like 140, 150, or somewhere in that range, and, you know, everyone knows if you're going to do indie music, you have to be uh, a lot, a lot more skinnier than that. Uh, you know, going back to photography, here's a, here's a photo I took of uh, a bunch of faces. Uh, you know, some other bands that you should listen to if you're a big Kevin Nunn fan. Um, you got Bread, you know, this really good folksy band from way back when. I mean, they're very, very soft-spoken. Unlike uh, Kevin Nunn, they, these guys would never, never scream in your face. We you got She and Him, you know, Ben Gibber. Now, that's a guy who uh, who had a soul of a poet, and, uh, and he's white. Um, and uh, lastly, we've got uh, the... Who, um, <laughs> I don't know how that got there. That's not one of my records. Some of my favorite bands in uh, in the local scene today, uh, there's Leapfrog Palace, uh, there's Zone, there's uh, Brickmouth and the Catholics, uh, there's Cannon Powershot 4800. Now, that's a damn good band. One of the one of the best things about Kevin Nung that I really enjoy is you know he he talks a lot about relationships and. And just what it means to, to exist in modern society. He continues on in the tradition and legacy of something like Raven Carver, which uh, I honestly haven't read, but uh, you know, I heard Shortcuts was a good movie. I think I think Kevin Nung would would get back into the music scene if he just did some acoustic covers of Michael Jackson songs. He's definitely not cool these days. I mean, I would never go. I would never show up at a Kevin Nung show. Unless if he uh, he does a reunion show ten years from now. Uh, I have this tall can of PBR to help me enjoy Kevin Nunn music. Uh, 